A sphincter says what? And they say, what? And I say, oh, so you're a sphincter? And they say, a raise? Really? No. The hog is what I call my penis. Ding! Not sure to get you open like six packs. Kill a bees exact. Flipping what? Murder one fat tracks. Year three is the beginning of us really looking at destiny from its heart out. We want to build destiny for its core fans. We want to make sure that we're building it for the people who love it. It's trying to make sure that players feel like they're on this journey with us rather than us dictating what they're experiencing. Sometimes you feel like the events of the world happen and sometimes you feel like you make the events of the world happen. That makes me every day go, what's the best version of Destiny we can put in front of players? The real thing I think we're doing this year is telling our players where we're going. Like, we're saying, hey, we're back. This is the five-year vision for the game. A lot of what we're doing this year is to set Destiny into a place where Destiny can begin its next major change. What we want to construct is a world where players feel like their actions, whether personal or as an overall global community, are moving the universe forward in some meaningful way. And so the vision for the game is awesome action MMO in a single evolving world that you and your friends can play anywhere. Shadowkeep is this first step to where we want to get to. Eris is going to make a discovery, and the discovery she makes is really important to where Destiny's going. Before us lies a dark remnant of their existence. Players are going to be called back to the moon, a place that they're very familiar with if they were players in Destiny 1, but they're going to find that it's been changed. And part of the game is understanding what changed it, and what has Eris discovered here? And what does it mean for the world, not just in the context of right now, but what does it mean for the game in March, and what does it mean for the game a year out? You're all insufferable! Save your torment for someone who gives a damn! You're gonna discover that you're plagued by these nightmares. Nightmares are manifestations of trauma of guardians who have come back to the moon. They even go further and become enemies that are from the past, that are now real again. Shadowkeep is not just a destination with a new set of missions on it. Shadowkeep is a transition for the entire solar system of how you play the entire game. Build crafting choices, deeper RPG chase, like more team play. One of the first things we set out to do with Shadowkeep was deepen the character sheet. He was implementing some of the feedback he got from Sheet. That led to all the changes that we made to Armor. Armor 2.0 is really all about making every slot on your character sheet have an impact. Stats are back, there's like more stats than ever. If you overhaul the mod economy, there's gonna be a bunch of you know mods that you can get for your finishers. There's a whole new crop of weapons that are coming out. There's new seasonal weapons to earn. There's the new Shadow Keep, Astro Shaman weapons. It's kind of like old school, magic y, like imbued with dark power sort of feel to it. You're fending for yourself. Eris is not trying to protect you. So the weapons, just like, they're guiding you through the experience and they're telling you when the nightmares are around. And we actually have it set up that when you're near the nightmares, like, they have a bit of this, like, almost like you can see through them or there's some glowing inside. This is one of the weapons that Victor is making. It's a rocket launcher, fires out seeker projectiles, so should be fun. You're gonna learn a bunch of cool stuff about Eris and this nightmare problem around the solar system, but you're gonna build a bunch of cool rewards. And then, you know, if you don't get roles that you like, you're gonna go back to the rune table and you're gonna make more. And that's part of being a Shadowkeep player. It's building your character your way. Try to like separate that like sort of ramp up cinematic like story climax people and from the 
Each year we have an expansion set that comes out like Shadowkeep and we're gonna have four follow-on seasons. And the expansions themselves are, are like meant to be an anchor that is gonna set that arc in a place. That growth, evolution, change, that's the stuff that manifests in the seasons. So we evolve the season pass. One of the biggest changes from the seasonal model you'll see from the annual pass is that we're focusing a lot more on how the seasons actually connect to one another. We want to make sure we're actually threading a narrative that players can follow starting in Shadow Key. We're going to start telling one continuous story. You want it to be meaningful. You want to understand, like, why was I sent there? We're actually trying to set up this concept of the season being something that occurs, and you want to be there and you want to experience it. The players are moving the world forward. They're making an impact. They're leaving that resonance in the world itself. How can Guardians actually come together and do something that unlocks rewards, pursuits, new experiences for everyone? We want a universe that's dynamic and changing. It's a universe where you can have memories. You can say things like, I was there when. Every season they log into Destiny, and there's a new way to play the game. Season rank, the artifact, the bonus power that comes with the artifact, player elective -like difficulty. These are all systems that are designed to make the game more compelling as a character building game. What we wanted to provide with the artifact was an infinite power grind for the players. The seasonal artifact is going to give you the tools that you need to defeat champions, our new hardest enemies in the new Nightfall modes. We're calling it Nightfall the Ordeal, so the players can choose how hard they want their difficulty to be. The further up you move in difficulty, the more likely you are to get the kind of rewards that you're looking for. The end game now is about powering up your artifact to get more powerful beyond your gear so you get to the hardest challenges. The hardest level of the Nightfall, or you're trying to hit the hardest raid challenge, or the dungeon. The dungeon that we're shipping in Shadowkeep's time frame is uh, deep within the moon. You fight your way down into like the depths of this chasm and there's all kinds of traps on the way. This is an opportunity for people that want the raid experience in terms of the, the mystery of the activity, but with Fire Teams 3. Charging you up, Lars, get in there! Go ahead. <laughs> We're thinking a lot about how we lay the foundations for a, a healthier PvP game. We're really committed starting in year three to have a renewed focus all through the year on PvP. That's gonna be bringing back Destiny 1 maps. It's gonna be bringing elimination into Crucible Labs. We're doing this really cool thing where we have four different iterations. Try them out week to week on the new maps and get feedback. We want seasons to be relevant for everyone. We want it to feel like everybody has something new to do and feel like they're all doing it together. We're here to build something that lives. Season of the Undying is when the Vex start invading from the Black Garden. And when they start invading the moon, you get to help take them out. Over the course of that three month period, you're going to be getting more powerful, stronger, and then eventually you're going to stop that invasion. The story that we're telling is about the impact that the Vex can have on the whole solar system if we leave them unchecked. It's really going to kick that act one of year three off. And then season eight gets going with a raid, Vex offensive, we've got nightmare hunts, exotic quests, we explore the moon, new strikes, new PvP maps. There's just so much going on, no matter what kind of player you are. Season 8 is the catalyst. Season 9 is really where things start to build. And then Season 10 is where things start to get pretty intense. And then Season 11, everything is going to come together. And you're going to want to be there to see it happen. It's going to be like no other time in Destiny. Single Evolving World is one of the biggest changes that we're going to make over time to Destiny. Getting to that single evolving world is asking us to kind of unlearn a bunch of the things that we've learned. Hopefully we think we've made the right calls, and if the answer is no, like, the good news is we're in full control to change it. We 
can keep evolving the game. We're turning it into a game that we're all proud to be working on. We have a vision, we have a roadmap, we have a, a place we want to take Destiny, and Shadow Keep and Seasonally Dying are just the first steps. It's a foundation. This is like the bedrock that we're going to build a lot of other stuff on top of. Forsaken broke a bunch of the bones that we had set, you know, with Destiny 2. What we've been able to do this year is we set them. Are we done? No. Not even close.